Joining us on the How To Be 60 podcast this week, actor and angler Robson Green, who at 58 feels in a better place now than he did in his 30s. At one time, the highest paid actor in Great Britain, I was... I was, my God, I was number one in the charts. I was traveling the world, doing things that most actors only dream of. And I was absolutely hemorrhaging inside. And I'm wondering how to be 60. It's scaring the shit out of me. Karen, are you excited at having Robson Green on? I'm very excited. Oh, God, she's got that funny little voice on. We're in for trouble, everyone. We're in for no, trouble. Uh, be mature. Yeah, I'm, I'm really cool about this. But I've seen it as well. Can I just see it? Just see. Well, I mean, of course, I was just thinking, you know, um, it's great to have Robson Green on for the first of our new kind of re- rebooted podcast. Accomplished actor, of course. Um, you know, Soldier, Soldier, Grandchester currently. host. Uh, you know, on a host of big dramas. Um, and now that you... <laughs> are a member of the Gifnick Theatre Players Amateur no. Dramatic Society. You two can share tips about life as a thespian. I can I just say, <laughs> tomorrow's my first date and I'm painting the set. Painting the set? No, I think that's just the, yeah, the heights of my, my dizzy heights. That's probably as far as it will go. Um, they said, they didn't even call it a set, they called it something else. And I thought... God, what do they mean? What do they mean? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming it's that. So, yeah, that's 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 all I'm allowed to be near at the moment. Did I mean? Did they realise that you, who you are? I mean, did they realise that you're the <laughs> you're on the graphic of the How to Be Sixty podcast, our new graphic? A uh, no, but I'll be pointing that out, <laughs> or maybe not. I won't. Yes. So, actually, do you know what I'm excited about going up there? And uh, yeah, when well, maybe Robson can give me a few tips. Yes, <laughs> on how to paint sets. I don't yes. think so. It's a long time since he's done that. <laughs> so, what do you think of our new graphic then? What do I think of it? Well, can you show it to me? Well, I mean, we can describe it to everybody out there. So, uh, we have me leaping through the air, beautiful blue sky behind me in my favourite red bathing suit. I have to say, looking rather toned, you have to, with your you have to say, with my own legs, how both of them. And then you are kind of tucked down quite quite low in the picture, it has to be said, yes. with a face like a smacked arse, looking <laughs> up at me uh, with a look of disgust. And, and I thought that really did kind of show the dynamic between us. Well, it does. It doesn't, yeah. Is it too late to complain? Yeah, it's too late to complain. You didn't do anything to make it happen, so you can't complain after the event. It doesn't show me in my best light. You Does sent it... me the picture. Could you ask for the, you told me what to do. Yeah. Uh, I mean, <laughs> God, did I oppose what you want? It wouldn't make it any good anyway. I mean, God, you're so ungrateful. We've got a new graphic. We've got a fantastic I, guest. I know, but you've taken over the whole thing again. Yeah, but you know, if I didn't do it, Karen, you wouldn't do it. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. We're in this lovely new studio. We are. We are. It's gorgeous. You've got a lovely big couch all to yourself. You've got your dog in there, which yeah. is lovely. Um, I mean, lovely. we've got all the visuals here. We could be on the YouTube. We could be on Beyond the Facebook. YouTube. That's old people always put the, the YouTube in oh, front of whoa. it. Oh, okay. I'm, not owning, but I'm owning my age now. Old. Oh, yeah. I don't think that's uh, part of it. No, no, I'm embracing it. We could be on the TikTok. The TikTok. Um, the TikTok, that's what they call it. We could start doing these silly dances together. Do you know? No. Have you been on the TikTok? The TikTok's <laughs> funny. <It's> like, <laughs> isn't it funny? It's like going down the Argyle Street. <laughs> Did you have the COVID? No, it doesn't sound right. Um, do you know those silly dances that people do? No. I never don't. watch the TikTok. You never watch the TikTok? No, no I don't. Oh my God. What am I missing out on? Tell me. Look. No. And you too know old to. Oh God, that's me saying. Don't there. say that. Everybody, everybody on social media is doing dances, little coordinated uh, moves. Uh, Why? Just. Well, there's a very good question. And, and I, I mean, who's it for? Well, I don't know. It's, it's for themselves. I mean, but why are they putting it on? Air or putting it online because that's modern life, isn't it? That's, it's, that's it's what people for themselves, do. isn't it? I'm so conflicted. It's with a it. bit like when people put on Facebook, "Oh, happy anniversary to my gorgeous husband," and you think, "Who's this for?" Just say to him face to face in the morning, you know, over coffee, "Happy anniversary, darling." God, I you're mean, miserable, aren't you? I am such a fucking trout. 
I have to admit. But but you know what? What's it all? Oh, oh, there's something well, on life. Actually, I'm just thinking, Robson, who may well have uh, already clicked off, will be back in and interested and engaged in the podcast because you've described yourself as a trout because he likes fish. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's right, actually. Oh, yeah, something in common. Oh, great. <laughs> well, it's difficult to have a conversation with you now about the people who do the dances on the TikTok, given that you've never seen them. Have but... you ever done? Have you ever put anything on TikTok? No. TikTok? Is that what you're supposed to see? Uh, no, you're not. I'm only winding you up. But this is the conflict because when I see people doing these kind of things on TikTok and you'll get people of all ages, um, I sometimes look and I think, God, isn't that really nice? You know, they are holding on to their youth, their energy, they're <laughs> rediscovering their inner child. It's marvellous. And then sometimes I look at them and I think... More often. You're a daft old sod, just stop it. And I don't know... Mm. Like, I don't know how I really feel about it. Well, I've just told you how I feel about people putting stuff online. Who's it for? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. I keep thinking, it's like, you know, sorry, this is completely different. Like, you know how you can see, and this is going back to the Ah. the King's Road. That's quite acceptable, isn't it, in London? Yeah. Do they not see the King's Road? Uh They don't see any other the road, do they? Uh, See, the conversation has moved on, but you have stuck. (laughs) You have stuck (laughs) about seven minutes ago. (laughs) <laughs> Your brain is on repeat going, the, there, oh, that's an intro. Oh, it, there, yeah, yeah. What, Maybe what? it's just prefixes. I found the you. subsequent um, topic slightly dull. <laughs> well, maybe it could be that. And um, we still have to decide. We've got a new studio, we've got a new graphic. We've You've got not a- got a new jumper, I've noticed, because there's a hole in the front. Can I just say, oh, I like yeah, the jumper. Yeah. It suits you. I think it probably suit me better. Do you think you could darn that for me? I could darn it. You might not get it back. <clears throat> but it, can you darn? Cash me. I, you, ca- you know I can darn and I can darn. Can you? The thing is, the question is, would you like it in a completely different colour, like pink? What the would that? That was so oh, because it's the modern way now. You don't try and, you know, match it. It match it in. You make a, you know, a thing of it. Contrast. Yeah, you do, love. Right. Find that on TikTok. You can do it. <laughs> the TikTok. <laughs> do they have darning on the TikTok? I don't know. I'm just lying. <laughs> Viral darning. Uh, right, we're going to do some emails, as we always do. And, of course, we're going to be speaking to Robson. But just before we do... And I'm also going to get Robson's advice on this. Mm. I want to ask you about this, right? So I got a, a belated birthday present from a very dear friend of mine mm. who I know will listen to this podcast. Right. Um, and can I just say, I am really grateful for the present, but I just thought I'd run it by everyone. Everyone's now looking very Do nervous. Do they? No, I am as well. Are you nervous? So what it is, it's it personal. is a sexy hot water bottle. Now, I know you might think that that is a bit of a contradiction. What shape is it? <laughs> Is it, got, is it like a tea? A kind of... Oh my God, I think we just invented a new sex toy, haven't we? No, no, no. I call it a sexy water bottle because it's leopard skin. It's a very plush fabric. Right. And it comes... This isn't This isn't the whole story. No, no. I... Um, and it comes with um, matching leopard skin eye mask. All oh, right. Right. So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking... Right. I don't know whether this is part of an S and M kit, and she hasn't sent me the other bits, or whether this is actually for sleeping. I I, I don't know. Um, but then, wow. oh, see the dog's upset. <laughs> the dog's upset at the thought of a sexy old what? Um, that's Bonnie, by the way. The dog. It's not Karen. Has suddenly developed some strange condition. Um, but then the other box. So that was one box. I thought mm, interesting. The other box was, again, leopard print. From the same person? Yeah. It's my 60th birthday, for God's sake. It's a very good friend. Uh, Leopard print silk baby dolls. Shit. I'm thinking (laughs) thinking (laughs) Belle Lynch here. (laughs) There's a question. I'm a too old for baby dolls. Baby dolls. (laughs) Oh, my God. That's a joke, clearly. What? Leopard. Are they slimy? Are they so, no, so, they're so, beautiful. They're they abs- satin. The beautiful, beautiful quality from a very well-known uh, lingerie firm. Gorgeous. Oh right. So they're for wearing probably in Spain rather than here. Well, I, mean, I don't when think when you're it really matters what country when you're feeling you're sexy in when you're wearing. Well, you're never at peace at this one. You're never in the same blinking city as Ian's. Oh, I'm presuming we're talking about Ian here. If you're feeling would sexy, would you would you appear before Stephen in a set of baby dolls? No, we're talking baby dolls. Is that like a camisole top and sort of French yeah. knickers? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I would. Would you? Yeah. Not leprosy. You think you should? Yeah. Really? Hey. Yeah, absolutely. Would they be fleecy? Oh, for f- <laughs> 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 Wincy eight. 
Well, do you remember on the left streets in Wednesday? Oh my God! Then you got the Brian Nylon ones, and if you because you didn't tell better that there's sparks everywhere, not on the good side. The sparks flew, but not in the right way. Anyway, Rob- Robson will be pondering on that. I know. Right, we'll have a couple of uh, emails. Yeah, I'm never right. really sure about um, leopard well, skin. Really, you see, yeah. this is you're doing it again. You got stuck on the the. And now you're getting stuck on the leopard skin. <laughs> we move on in a conversation. Oh, that's really? being mindful, Kay. Yeah, you're, you're just like, right, move on, move on, move on. Let's not, no, no. Let's not process it properly. I'm still No, it's this. being geriatric, believe me. Right, so this is an email from Alison. Now, right, Alison had been in touch before. Do you remember? Alison is the lady who's in the Isle of Wight and she joined a burlesque dancing group. Yes, yes. Do you remember? Yes. Um, well, we read out that email, obviously, and she says she got the shock of her life. So surprised. I was on, I nearly fell off the running machine at the gym. Oh, I've done that actually. I've done that in a hotel in London, quickly. Soho House in London, very trendy, cool. And twice I got spat out the back of a running machine. That's horrible. But all of those like 20 year olds are behind me. Not one of them even looked at me. Oh no. And I skinned my knees. I had blood running down my leg. What Everything. happened? Did you just stop it? I just missed my footing twice. And I now have a fear of running machines. I didn't bite your tongue when you do. I know, I know. Anyway. I'm not surprised you got a fear of running let's get Sorry, Alison. Let's get back to Alison. Sorry, Alison. So, uh, she says, things have progressed with my burlesque classes. Mm-hmm. Just before Christmas, I performed at the Christmas show here on the island, the Isle of Wight. The last show I performed was in a nativity play in the 70s. We are a group of lovely ladies that all have our own stories. Most of us are similar age, shape, size. We're just mm-hmm. enjoying ourselves. I absolutely love it. This week we started our new routine. I smile all the way through the class. Um, oh. Even today, walking our dog, I am dancing along the disused railway track. I'm glad it's just used. <laughs> yes. Thank you, ladies. You've been such an inspiration to me over the past uh, few months. And Kay, I challenge you to find a burlesque class. Alison, sorry, I'm reneging. Well, right now, now that I've got oh. my baby dolls um, and giving it a go, no course it required. And she's attached a photograph from the show. And this is perhaps my favourite line that everyone, anyone has ever emailed us. She says, I am the cowgirl on the left. <laughs> That's a great picture. She had a good look at this one. There she is. Look, I'm going to hold it up for Robson. Alison Lucas in the Isle of Wight. Amazing, is I am well. showing Robson Green. You <laughs> I mean, as you the cowgirl I'm so on the left. Doesn't she look That's fabulous? fantastic. Yeah. God, good for her. Well done, Alison. Well done, you, I know. That is brilliant. That's brilliant. She does it. You look great. You look absolutely great. And they all look great. They look as if they're having such a, such a laugh. Um, Alison, I don't, if, if you're listening to this one, Alison, I did challenge you to find Nikki on the Isle of Wight, who's somebody else who's emailed us. I want the two of you to get together. And Nikki, if you are listening, because the two of you are kindred spirits, just walk about the island looking for the cowgirl on the left. <laughs> and you will know that that is Alison. And the two of you, you'll get on like a... Oh, what a nice. Fire. What a lovely email. Thrilled. One more. Dawn says, I discovered this podcast quite recently and I have enjoyed catching up. I'm 53... Ah, she's a kindred spirit of mine. I've always lied about my age. Mm. Why? I don't know. Just like Kay. Um, my 15-year-old son saw my driving licence recently and the realisation that his mum was actually born in 1969 shocked him and he hasn't stopped teasing me. Uh, I'm secretly mortified. I've told him not to tell his mates. What is wrong with me? Uh, I would love to <laughs> bloody retire. Oh, God, you and me both don't. Um, I've reduced my hours, so I now have a balance. Love your podcast. Still catching up. Please keep going now that you are 60. Well, we are going to do that. We will. We are. Um, and so you please keep your emails coming. Uh, podcast at htb60.com. Right, let's take a quick break before we speak to <laughs> poor old Robson. Robson, how... Are you? Hello. How are you, Kay? And, <laughs> and how are you, Karen? And if I was an angler, Karen, you would be a keeper. There was no catch and uh... release with you. Just very. <laughs> See what I did there? No, that was no idea what that means. Is it a backhanded well, compliment? Either, Is that a full grown well, insult? Well, you never, you never, you t- you never kill a fish you're going to eat. You're not going to eat from you. <laughs> so in angling terms, when you catch a fish... You keep it. You keep it. You're a keeper. Oh, but sometimes they look at fish. Thing. Sometimes, sometimes they let it go, catch and release. So it's a compliment. Take it as an angling compliment. Right. They so do you have to be over a certain weight before you can keep them, or you want no, to keep them? See, sometimes, sometimes it's bonniest looking fish. Sometimes it's biggest fish. 
Sometimes it's, you know, that the longest fish, sometimes oh. it's the prettiest fish. <gasps> sometimes, you know, that prettiest fish is a keeper. Oh, and then you bonk it over the head and you cook it. <laughs> oh, lovely. It's all ahead of me. <laughs> Thanks. I'm so glad I'm a keeper. She yeah. just heard bonk it there and got a bit excited, but then she heard the end of oh, the yeah. sentence and then she got a bit deflated. Yeah. And so is she the bonniest looking trout you've seen in a long time, Robson? <laughs> <laughs> she, fish don't have she, teeth, do they? <laughs> you what? Fish don't have teeth, do they? Oh yeah, they do. What? what why lep? Why leopard? Kay? What's with the leopard? Why not? That's why I think. What's or it? tiger or zebra? What's with the leopard? Is it because no. it doesn't change its spots? A leopard oh, never well, changes but, its spots. But there's an interesting question. I don't know why leopard skin is always seen as sexy. I, I don't know the answer to that. But so bit Lynch, isn't it? What do you think, baby dolls at my age? Do, they, do you think, Robson? Well, you, you know, well, like anything, as one gets older and you put on something that you think works. The only example I can give: I went to Savile Row in London years ago, paid a ridiculous, ridiculous amount of money for a suit that made me look like. Geordie version of Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen and I looked in the mirror and I went yeah that works and I'm walking down Newcastle High Street and everybody's going look at that nope <laughs> they just didn't say it out loud God. I'm not going to say it I'm a swagger. Hi, Karen <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, no, um, I don't know what it is um, but it's, it's up to you it's how you feel isn't it yeah, absolutely. So, listen, you um, went into acting at a relatively young age. Karen, I don't know if you heard us say earlier, actually always wanted to get into to that world, but uh, your mum and dad weren't keen, were they? My mum told me to be sensible, go and get a job. Don't yeah. be ridiculous. Yeah. So that was yeah. it. So now yeah. Karen has joined an amateur dramatic uh, company mm-hmm. called the Gifnick uh, Gifnick Players. Players. I don't know, do you recognise each other as thespians? Is there some <laughs> kind of code that you... Secret code you have between you? I don't know. <laughs> well, see, but, well, you know, I don't know how you find it because I, I mean, I, I wasn't an actor when I left school. I worked in a shipyard and I was a naval architect and I was a, a draftsman. I never wanted to be any of that. I wanted to be a pilot, but I s- suddenly realised that if the RAF and I were to survive, we'd have to part. It didn't work out. But when it came to the the acting side of things, I was in an amateur dramatics group and I loved it. And to, mm-hmm. in today. They were the happiest times, Karen. They were the happiest times because I didn't have to worry about trying to make a living out of it. I had a really secure job in the shipyard and it was something I genuinely loved. It was a hobby I was passionate about. And I I miss it. I miss that vibe terribly. But um, I remember in one production, there was a casting agent in the audience and uh, she's called Jane Arnell. And she says, uh, this was in 1985. And she says, I'm casting for a new series by the BBC. And it's called Casualty. And there's this character, huh? one of this, this regional character's a porter. And uh, she turned up to the Amdram. She had a choice of going to see the Royal Shakespeare Company, but she came to see an Amdram instead to have a look at the local talent. And she um, said, uh, how do you feel about taking it up professionally? I've seen you on stage. You look like you've got the ingredients to survive, which is what acting is about. I went down to, to London and uh, went down on the clipper, eight pound. And that, that, in 1985, I was being paid £33 a week in the shipyard. And then when I got the part in the casualty, I passed the audition. They were paying me £400 per diems a week. So instead of getting wow. the clipper, I, I got Bri- Bryman Airways up and they called me, sir. <laughs> and they said, wow. how would you like your steak cooked? So there's still, there's still time. It's just, you know, it's just that right moment. It, it's funny when well, you say that. I was looking at your Instagram because you, well, A, you say you're nearly 60. You're actually 58. You're only 58 on the 18th of December. If I was still 58, no way on God's earth would be saying <laughs> nearly 60 because as far as I'm concerned, I'd be pushing it into the distance. Um but so it was a nice, well, there's a picture of you, you had a beautiful cake. It was um, an angling cake, which was nice. And this is what you wrote. When I was a kid, I used to look at someone my age and think, how on earth are you still alive? <laughs> As I enter my 59th year, I'm thinking the wheel is still turning, but the hamster is slowing down a bit. However, I refuse to grow old no matter how long I live. There's a lot to unpack there, Robson. Mm. A lot to unpack. Mm. Well, you know, you know what it is. I, th- 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 you, you know, you're getting old in so many ways. And they say, "Give me the boy of seven, and I give you the man." To a certain extent, that's incredibly true. 
but emotionally and 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 the mental energy yes you're still that seven year old but i can't do those things that i did when i was a 17 year old that i did when i was 18 when i was 21 and like i don't know about you but i'm waking up in the morning of late feeling as though i've been injured in my sleep feeling as though there's been some kind of fight going on i'm just i can't my legs ache my back aches i had a bad back injury years ago that stopped me doing lots of things but i'm still having to do this these stretches in the morning this routine in order to function and the one thing i honestly do do and it's kind of in, in a way plagiarizing what ricky gervais says sometimes it's like i wake up and i go oh great i didn't die <laughs> looking on the bright side <laughs> but yeah so, um it, i like it though i do like it well, well, do you like it? I mean, how are you about the ageing process? I mean, Karen and I, when we started this podcast, I was very firmly on the side of I, I, I lied about my age, I denied my age to myself, I, I wasn't comfortable with being 60, old, etc., etc. Karen's very different. She embraces it. She's made choices in her life that that have enhanced her life. She gave up a job that she wasn't particularly enjoying and she now does things that she loves. So we are on kind of opposite sides of this, although I am coming round to it. Where do you stand, I you know, as you approach? You're with Karen? I, I stand firmly with Karen. I stand with Karen. <laughs> I stand with Karen. No, I do, because, yeah, in the 90s and the kind of early 2000s, it was all work. And my dad used to always say, this is true, he used to say, work is a word that's not meant to be enjoyed. That is why you call it work. So find something that, you love to do that you're passionate about and it won't feel like work i think what i'm trying to articulate is this because of course you've got to pay the bills but try and just find the balance and i'm in that lovely position now where i can kind of find the balance that's why i love fishing because fishing it's like normal and when i think about the acting let me think about it it is strange kind of pursuit with you know fake and sincerity in front of the lens i'm not a detective in grantchester i was never a surgeon in in reckless, I wasn't a soldier and soldier, soldier. And I'm, you know, I wasn't a clinical psychologist and wiring the blood. And and sometimes it, it, it's quite ludicrous and absurd the profession. Uh, and you you are faking sincerity, and you're suspending disbelief, and you're pretending to be other people. Whereas with the fishing and the lovely factual programs I've been doing of late, I can do things that are normal and feel normal, and I can choose to do. So standing in a river casting a line to a fish feels very normal to me. Going for lovely walks in Northumberland feels incredibly normal. I'm a cold water swimmer. It's just normal. Oh, are you? Yeah. Oh, Doesn't God, I'm that, trying to get myself no, into that Robson, but I just oh, don't get you, it. It takes years off you. Well, that's, again, that's, that's, that's from me dad. My dad, you see, taught me and my brother David to swim by just throwing us in the North Sea. And if you want any idea, it, it, it was, it was either sink or swim. And let me tell you, the thought of hypothermic shock really focuses the mind. We <laughs> used to turn blue, but we'd come out like a Polaris missile. And but I, because my dad was a miner and he worked in an industry that, in my opinion, wasn't designed for human beings, him and his ilk, with any spare time they had, would go swimming. It was either gardening, racing pigeons, or swimming. There was a lot of miners who were cold water swimmers. And they'd just go to Tynemouth, or they'd go along Druidge Bay, or Seahouse, and look at Bamber. If you've been on the Northumbrian coast, you'll know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And Dad would swim for miles in red trunks. And I mean for miles. He had an incredible engine on him. And it really made him feel alive. And I suspect, in a stranger, that was where my dad dealt with his mental mm. health. And, yeah. um, and, and his ill dealt with his mental health and the science is there it's good for blood circulation it's good for depression brings down cortisol levels and even today you know in this world of emails and and you, you know when you're cold water swimming you don't think about your inbox you really don't good for a heart attack i would say it was <laughs> yeah it's good well, for I mean... heart and it's very good for the skin as well collective tissues very good I mean, there is so much science around it, and you know, I I would like to get into. I'm just a bit of a a bit of a wuss, I suppose. But so many people like you, Robson, extol its virtues. But just going back to you know the fishing, the walking, as you say. Um, in fact, you've got a new program starting on on Monday, haven't yeah. you? That's Monday the 23rd of January, which is Robson yeah. Green's uh, weekend escapes. But we've seen you over the years alongside your your acting, doing more of these kind of programs. 
out in the countryside or, or angling, deep sea fishing. But from a personal level, did you get into that as a kind of antidote to the slightly false world of acting? In a way, yes. I mean, I the, the, my company uh, produced it uh, in co-production with Signpost, but it, it was it was really something that w- was tendered for. The, the BBC gave a remit. I was It was my company against 30 others, and they went, all we want is something that showcases the Northeast with ordinary people doing extraordinary things. And the Northeast is a huge area, and we felt, how about just making a love letter to the Northeast and travel, take the roads less traveled to hidden gems with friends, family and familiar faces and meet the ordinary people doing extraordinary things for our mental health. And so we take guests like the amazing Jill Scott and Les Ferdinand and Lee Ridley, Lost Boy Sky. We have LJ Ross, the writer. And what it does in the program, not o- only do they open up of how they deal with their mental health set against these beautiful backdrops, but it also triggers childhood and from the age of six, seven, how they got to where they are today. And it was really a great um, mechanism for that. And that's what we tended to the BBC and we got the commission. So really, you know, there's two things I love doing in life. I love showcasing the Northeast, but I also love investing in people and giving people jobs and creating an infrastructure for an industry in the Northeast. So that is a real antidote to pretending to work out who the murderer is, work out how to perform this bowel resection or bleeding varices, or be a soldier or a clinical psychologist, you know what I mean? Yeah. So if you were an interviewee on your own programme rather than the interviewer, what would you be saying about how you deal with your mental health, what it means to you to be in the outdoors, what, what the North East means to you? Well, it's... it's, it's Sometimes difficult to articulate, but the only way I can I, I, I can explain it, um, I live in a in a place called Hexham. Believe it or not, the happiest place to live in the UK. True, it's been both mm. two years running. Hexham, check it out. It's, a, it's an amazing place. Um, and I was born here, and I've been fortunate enough to travel to countries all over the world. I've travelled to over 140 countries because of the fishing shows and the factual shows and some of the acting I've done, but. I'm always happy to come home and um, because I know the history of this place. It's quite extraordinary. I live right next to Hadrian's Wall. So I have a sense of origin and a sense of history, a sense of place. But also it's just a feeling. It's not the house. It's not the river. It's not Hexham. I just, I feel at ease. And we know what that feeling is. You know, when you're feeling good or well, it's a sense of well-being. So it's a feeling of belonging and and. And, and a feeling of just being content with it. You know, that's, it, it's slightly vague, but it's, it's just a feeling of being here, being present and being happy. And, you know, some people pay a lot of money to try and get that feel. But um, being here, surrounded by family and loved ones and growing up in an extraordinary area with an extraordinary history is, is, is a good thing to be surrounded by. I mean, you can't have it if you're sitting there swimming, sorry, fishing, um, you know, it's very mindful. What's going through your mind when you're just sitting there on your own, in your own world? Uh, the only thing that really, when you're going through your mind, you're focusing on the task in hand. It's a thing, it's, uh, it's uh, a philosophy called flow. You're in flow. You're in water. You're surrounded by the elements. You're actually focusing on the task. And fly fishing is what, which is the only thing I do now. It requires skill. It's a really challenging way to catch fish, but it's incredibly rewarding. But it really focuses the mind. So all I'm focusing on is the cast, is the action of the cast, mm. the timing. And believe it or not, the thing that goes through my mind when I'm casting is um, Strauss, you have the, the, Johann Strauss's waltz. Bum, ba, da, 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 bum, bum, <laughs> bum, bum. So that goes through my mind. But also... You read the water, you're, you're looking at the conditions, you're looking at the natural indicators to where the fish are. So you're becoming like this fish psychologist. You need you become a, a kind of scientist in a way. You check the water temperature. So that's what's going to remind. I'm mm. focused on the task in hand. I'm not thinking about Twitter or Instagram. I, and, you know, I never used to do social media. It's a company that runs the account because, you know, 
in my opinion, Twitter's for people who can't shut up, even when they're on their own. <laughs> but um, you focus at the task in hand. And I think that's a lovely thing to have no other distraction than the task at hand. And therefore, you're incredibly present in the yeah. And therefore, you are in flow. Yeah. And so same it's... with acting as well. Same with acting. Well, you know, when you're in flow and acting, it's really liberating. Yeah, but it's so interesting you say that. Well, just as a side, I have to say, I take it you're not going to come on the TikTok with us and do some dancing, Rob, so we'll just put that off to one side. But, you know, I, I um, sort of rib Karen about jigsaws because she loves jigsaws and, and doing these uh, sort of pursuits that are just very absorbing because um, I, I, I kind of, I'm a bit flighty and, and I, I guess I've always been sort of climbing along. And I've said this as I approach 60, most of my life is a Capricorn, not that I really buy into that much, but, you know, I'm sort of climbing, I'm looking for the next place to go. Whereas at this stage of my life, I think I've now got to think about growing rather than just climbing. Whereas everything that you've described, and even taking you back to when you said you loved your Amdram, because you were doing it because you loved it rather than where you thought it might take you, yeah. um, whether you might sort of climb up a ladder. Yeah. When you first, you know, were spotted, as, as you described, and, and then your career really took off, um, were you as mindful then or did you get locked into the next step, the next move, you know, fame, the whole kind of celebrity game? Yeah, I mean, you've hit it on the head. I mean, I was, you know, I was I was governing. I was, I was, I was being controlled by something else. I wasn't in control of anything. You know, you make choices, but I, I, I wasn't making the right choices. There was... Um, you know, it was all about viewing figures. Um, like, I don't know, you know, in, in, um, I was chasing viewing figures all the time. I was wanting the next job to move on to movies. I was wanting to work into America because you thought that's what you had to chase. Do you know what I mean? I was, I was, I was governed by viewing figures, and I'm sure you agree, in our industry, you cannot move for advice. And I was taking advice from everyone instead of just a few people who you respected and trusted. I was taking advice from, from all sides. So the choices I, were made, I was making were ones to chase the next job, as you say. I wasn't actually growing in any way. I, I was chasing something that, if I got it, be it, that you, know, you chase the BAFTA, you chase the Oscar, you chase all those things, I would still be chasing something else rather than just sitting back and finding what's important and is this really making me genuinely happy? Again, another vague term, but we all know what that means because we've all experienced it. And there was a period during my career where, you know, from the outside, I should be ecstatic. I mean, you know, as I was one of the, I was at one time the highest paid actor in Great Britain. I was, I was, my God, I was number one in the charts. I was traveling the world, you know, first class travels and just, you know, doing things that most actors only dream of. And I was absolutely hemorrhaging inside. I was going, what is this feeling? Why am I not happy? Because I was just chasing rather than growing and making the correct choice. So that's what, that's what I'm doing now. I'm, you know, getting back to what I said at the start, the voice. my dad always said it was, it was an important thing to invest in people, as did my, as does my mother, as did my grandfather and my grandmother. They always said invest in people because the rewards will always come back. Mm. Yeah, the other interesting thing you mentioned about your your dad, um, and and it's like my my, my grandpa was was a miner, my other grandpa was a, was a dot worker. So I mean, I come from a very similar tradition to to you, Robson, and there was a very sort of clear divide between work, which was something that had to be done uh, to pay the bills, and then you know your free time and. Well, all of mine were into ca keeping pigeons, as it happens. That was their absolute passion, and, and they loved it. And there was that clear divide. Yes. And then my my generation, our generation, comes along, and we say, "No, we want to enjoy work. You know, we don't want to just do something to pay the bills. You know, we want to enjoy it." And whilst in some ways that's good, the downside of that is that the two can become confused, and you're not able to make that separation anymore. And I wonder if that happened mm -hmm. with you when, you know, suddenly everything's taken off and as you say, you're the hottest stickest in town and, oh my God, lucky old Robson. Um, mm -hmm. But where were your boundaries? Well, no, there, there weren't any until I, I sought help. That's what I did. I went to see a therapist in the, in the late 90s and we sat down and I said, I'm having trouble focusing 
on things. I have very little clarity of what's going on. I can't, I can't process this job anymore. And um, I'm becoming unhappy. And as we spoke over the weeks, he diagnosed it as depression. And he went, you know, and, and people from the outside, again, will look at it and went, oh, what is there to be depressed about? But it's all relative. And as we talked, he, we talked about my upbringing and my relationship with my father, as you do, and your parents and your family. He goes, oh, my God, you talk about your dad swimming a lot. You really like that, didn't you? You, you talk about fishing a lot. You talk about walking a lot. Why are you not doing that? He said, I said, I just don't have the time. He said, find time. You'll be able to find the time. I mean, you've got a certain amount of power in the choices you can make. And, they're, you know, they're not going to think ill of you if you go, do you know what? I'm not going to do eight episodes of that series. I'll do six. I'm not going to do 11-day fortnights. I'm going to do five daily. And I'm going to reduce it because I was in that very fortunate position to do that. It's different for everybody, but this is, this is my story. And then I just started fishing again. And I started walking again. I started swimming again. I started gardening again. My father was an amazing gardener. My grandfather was a pigeon man. I mean, racing pigeons from France back to Newcastle. It's just a wonderful thing. And you know what? They loved at it in the world. Really bloody good at it as well. And all his ilk were really good at it. The men and women. And I and I miss being alongside that. I kind of miss that that focus and that expertise. Expertise and, and the enjoyment and the pleasure men and women get from creating something and investing in something and nurturing something. Being a pigeon. I mean, I used to love the dog racing as well. But growing flowers is such a, a wonderful thing to do. I mean, I don't know. Do they still have leak shows? I don't still know. Have... The biggest marrow? I don't know. <laughs> but that used to be a great thing. And, you know, the, 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 my father was, he used to grow prize onions and prize leeks. And he used to, he used to win. The prizes were fridges and coloured TVs. That's how long ago it was. And there were really prizes, and the kind of romance and the love of it and the passion disappeared when money became the prize. So I, I, I'm not sure what where we where we go from here with that, but I still kind of obtain those those values of of what is important in life. And as you say about right the start there, I've decided to kind of choose where it's started to go, and I'm not chasing anything anymore. And I think it's made me feel better anyway. Uh, well, what did your dad say to you at that time? You were obviously very close, that you, you were kind of lost in celebrity, if you like. My parents were enjoying the, you know, the, 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 the results of fame and perceived success within television because I was able to, you know, buy them things that they themselves couldn't afford. I mean, mum was holding down two jobs at the time. She was a cleaner and she was a shopkeeper. And then suddenly I, I was able to go out of respect and love. I was going, I don't want you to do that anymore. And um, here's some, some way you can live and let's invest in this and let's have a lovely holiday. And dad, you don't have to do all this work all the time. You know, you don't have to get the bus. Here's a car. You know, I was able to do that. Um, so he, he wasn't good. My dad was not going to go. <laughs> he wasn't give it up, go. son. Let's give it up, son. <laughs> because that robber you bought me, it's, 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 it's awful. It's a banger. No. But you, you I'm know. back on the bus. <laughs> no. So, I mean, they, they, they started getting used to a certain kind of mean. So, but he was just... He, I, I did chat with Dad about it because I was out of control in certain... You know, I was eroding a very destructive path in, in, in many ways. And um, I actually started swimming again with my dad and going for walks and going on holiday with my dad and going caravanning with my dad. And that really helped. And just mm. talking with your parents as you get to a stage and just telling them how much you love them and how much you can't pay your bank from, you know, mm. what they're giving you. Mm. That's a lovely barrier to mm. cross as well. Do you regret those years or do you think, do you know what, I had to go through it to learn the lessons? Yeah, I failed. I failed miserably in those years but um failure is an event it's, it's it's not and has never been a person so i don't I, I don't live with regret i live with failure and um i'm absolutely fine with that um what way did you fail what sorry what uh, i well I, I i kind of failed in terms of that you know focusing on the job and i disrespected a lot of people who i was working for because i wasn't in good health i was drinking far too much I just wasn't healthy, and it's it's well documented about the addictions I I, I had, and um, I I I needed help, 
And so therefore I was failing the people I was working with who were investing in me and taking time with me. I was failing my family as well. I was, I was disrespecting my mother and father who um, gave me everything so, and, and worked so hard. So we didn't need to go with that. Um, so in that way, I, I, I failed. Hmm. God, you've, you're a thinker, Robson, aren't you? Um, I mean, not, not every, well, not everybody is in life, you know, and I'm not saying that to, to sort of elevate some people or, or to suck up to you or whatever, but you obviously have had periods in your life that you stopped and thought, right, okay, I, I've got to think about how I'm living my life and, and what I want to do. Um, so at this stage in your life, 58, and stop saying you're nearly 60 because you're 50. You are, you've got to round it up. You've got to round no, it up. No, you don't. You can, Stop it. You do because, but, yeah. but they're, saying, they're saying things like in 2050, there'll be no carbon emissions. In 2050, I don't think I'll be here. <laughs> so, you know, we're in the last third of our lives. I think we need to, so I just need to go, you know what? Take it today and it comes. Live in the present. Because I love that I, I love those, you know, the campaigning for the twenty fifty, no more carbon emissions. <laughs> I won't be here. <laughs> so you round it up to the to the next up the way, obviously up the way. Round it down, yeah. Robson. Round it down. You in your fifty ninth year. It's like you know when they say the eighteenth century. That's actually seventeen fifty. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? So that if you want to change confused. the syllabus at school, tell them. Because that's, you know, I was brainwashed into rounding up. <laughs> so you are comfortable about being in your 59th year, nearly 60 then? You're happy? Of course I'm not. <laughs> what the I I just, what I've just talked about for the last whatever. It's absolutely nonsense. I'm hemorrhaging inside. No, no, no. I, I'm absolutely happy. I'm absolutely I know. happy. I know. I'm, I'm completely, I don't know where you stand now. <laughs> can, I, can, can I ask you, honestly, you know, you can answer as honest as you, as you like or not, but I mean, we've spoken to a lot of women on the podcast and I'll be honest with you, I think women are more forthcoming, uh, you know, when they're talking about this kind of stuff than blokes, for terrible generalisation. And, you know, rightly or wrongly, we talk a lot about the ageing process in terms of the impact it has on us physically. I don't know whether that affects blokes or not. Um and I'm not saying that you're not a heartthrob now, Robson. Yes, you're still a heartthrob. But you know what? <laughs> Back in the day, you, you know, <laughs> they had them swooning. Sorry, Listen, have I said something Years called? ago. Years ago. Uh -huh. I, you know, I used to think I was a catch, Karen. Keep with the <laughs> fishing terminology here. But now I am definitely catch and release. You know, I don't like that. I don't recognise the I was going to say that. Spirit. <laughs> no, but I mean, do you, come on, do you miss the days that you could have walked into the room and had your pick? Oh my God, maybe you can still. But I don't know, but Robson knows what I love the way Karen, about. I love the way Karen talks to you there and she didn't think I would get <laughs> Karen, Karen, you're dead right. You know what, you, you want to see some of the fan mail I get? It's eclectic. <laughs> Let me just say, it's eclectic. <laughs> the best. I got well, one recently. I got one recently from a lovely lady, and it was in a Union Jack envelope, and she'd written "God right. save the God save the Queen" on the back. Bless her, may she rest in peace. And I opened it up, and there was forty pounds in it. Oh, it was a fourteen oh. twenty pound note. She she wrote oh, her and she said, "I've just seen you recently in Grantchester," and she said, "In Grantchester, you look like you you you're losing too much weight. Get yourself some fish and chips." <laughs> is that the price to be did chips? Oh, oh my god, is that right? God. Do you like you need some dip? <laughs> oh. Well listen, if you get a photograph next week of a headless body in leopard skin baby dolls, you'll know who it is from. So <laughs> you've got good legs in there. <laughs> oh, come on. Um, all right, I'm letting you off with the heartthrob one then. I've clearly put my foot in it something terrible. Before we let you go, Robson, we do this thing, we play big six oh bingo. So we've got fifty questions and we randomly pick two numbers. Um, and throw the question at you. In fact, oh, this is Karen's job. Is it? Hey, I haven't passed it over. Chat. Number 19. What were you wearing when you were 20? Hmm, it's a new one. Not heard that one before. What were you wearing when you were 20? When I was 20. Or do you know what? Was that a kid dad? dad? No, my dad was a teddy boy. And my dad. <gasps> oh, that. Um, yeah. And I thought it was great. And I, was, I still am a huge fan of Elvis. And I'm still the, the Bill Haley era and all that kind of retro stuff. So I wore drapes. I used to wear crepe shoes. 
black suede crepe shoes and blue drapes. Oh, lovely. And you've got uh, the hair for it. Your hair would be fantastic. Does you have the quiff, the sideburns? Add the quiff, yeah, and the DA at the back. The DA, we all know oh. what the DA stands for. Yeah. Do you know what it stands for, Karen? D, district attorney. Oh, Jesus. No, let's just wait, Robson. Let's give her a minute. The DA. Come on. The DA. Come on, Karen. The DA. Go on. D. The DA. No. Is it, is it after somebody? Is it somebody's name? Okay. You see, you're I, I'm going to I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it in French. I'm going to say it in French. I'm going to say it in Go French. Canard Derrière. I didn't even hear that, sorry. Canard. Canard right, Derrière. Is Canard not meat? Oh, no, that's Derrière. Carney. Oh, this is going to take too long. It's a duck's arse, you silly cow. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> duck's arse. <laughs> but I like that. Canard. Derrière du canard. Perfect. A vegetarian, yeah, that's what you that's recognize. A, the and word. that's how I spoke when I was trying to. <laughs> right, one more. One more. Oh, uh, 43. 43. If you could have a million pounds and another 10 years of life or another 20 years and no cash, what would it be? <laughs> if I could have a million pounds, is this kind of a, a rhetorical question? Because uh, I've done well for myself, Karen. No, no. <laughs> Oh, right. No, but if you could have another million pounds. Oh, does it not mean anything to you, a million pounds? Anyone in the 10 hours of life? Cute. The people that we mix with, Kay. <laughs> or I'd like to mix with. She's oh, punching yeah. Robson. She's punching another you know, 10 years. You took Definitely the 10 years. Another 10 years. Another 20 years. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I, 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 I want to grow old, Grace, but you know, I, want to, I want to experience different things. That's, you know, there's a nice way of looking at it, isn't it? Rather than fearing, you know, that older age, that think, well, okay, it's going to be a different experience. It's going to be, you know, something new. Yeah, I like that. So you're that. going to be very philosophical. Yeah. yeah. So you're going for ten quality years, and then no, 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 you'll take as long as you'll ten give quality them. years. Yeah. 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 Um, Robson, listen, thank you. You're, you're a great sport. It's been really lovely to speak to you. Um, and we're looking forward to uh, your new show coming out of BBC uh, Robson Green's Weekend Escapes. Um, and of course, it's always available on iPlayer. The iPlayer. I love the iPlayer. Um, it's really uh, handy. And uh, yeah, maybe even I will uh, get some mindfulness rather than the mindlessness that I currently have. It's, it's a joy right now, Robson, because I'm watching Karen try to fold up my iPad <laughs> and it's it's not a pretty sight. Well, that's to a say. blinking keyboard attached to the right <laughs> about <laughs> Take it back. Robson, thank you. Thank you so much. It's been lovely to talk to you. Okay. It's been, thank it's you been lovely to Karen, you. I admire your taste in men. Thank you. <laughs> I might go fishing with you sometime. <laughs> Who playing and sinker? <laughs> All right, bye then. Cheery. Well, what a charmer, eh? <laughs> You're not joking. <laughs> what a charmer. Show what he's like in his youth. Because he's still got it, isn't he? Uh, oh, has he? Well, I mean, the charm, I mean. <laughs> oh, backpedaling, backpedaling. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, there you know, I might go fishing with old Robson, eh? <laughs> You're, his, him in. You're his kind of trout. <laughs> <laughs> or duck's arse one of the two I can't <laughs> remember <laughs> which <laughs> what else have heard the canard I'd forgotten oh god I was struggling <laughs> anyway district attorney <laughs> <laughs> that's because I've been watching the, been watching the good wife I love the good wife anyway uh, that is it from us for this week um, remember keep those emails coming in podcast at htb60 dot htb60 dot com you've almost got it mm, thank you Anne Hegarty from The Chase is with us next week. The governess, the district attorney and me. Wish me luck. And in other news, Karen and I are going live again. We've got a live show at the Glasgow Comedy Festival. It's on Tuesday, the 21st of March. So if you'd like to come along and see us, uh, then just search for the Glasgow Comedy Festival and you can get tickets there. See you next week. <laughs>